Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is part two of the disassembly of my 350 Pontiac engine. I'm not going to do the narration uh, over the video this time. I'm going to talk to you right as I'm doing the work. One thing I wanted to clear up quick. I was watching a video earlier, and I watch other YouTube videos just like you do. I saw somebody that's kind of a well-known automotive journalist attribute the ball stud rocker arm, which is this right here, to Chevrolet in 1955. And it's well known that Chevrolet did use the ball stud rocker arm on the new for 1955 small block V8. But this ball stud rocker arm, that was developed by a Pontiac engineer named Clayton Leach. And it was first used on these series of engines. These, the Pontiac V8 was originally supposed to be introduced in 1954, but there was eternal pressure at GM from Buick, who had just introduced their nail valve V8 to push back the introduction of the Pontiac V8 to 1955, which it got quickly overshadowed by the brand new Chevrolet small block V8, which it probably should have. The engine, the Chevy V8 was the first engine to use uh, thin wall casting techniques. But Chevrolet copied this from Pontiac with Pontiac's blessing. And that is where the ball stud rocker came from. It was a Pontiac um, invention, and we should give the right credit to the right guy, and that was Clayton Leach. So that's out of the way now. On with the video. I'm going to take off the timing cover. See what we got. A little impact is older than all my kids. <laughs> I've had that a long time, but it still works well. Bought that in 1987 off the Snap-on truck. I think I'm still making payments on it. I see what the problem is. The broken bolt in here, and I think that's holding it up. We'll be back in a minute. We're going to get some penetrating oil. Hello everybody, um, the other day when I started this part two of my Pontiac 350 teardown, we were working the timing cover. I did get that off, but it was a nightmare. That uh, bolt was not only froze into the aluminum housing, it was bent. So that was a lot of fun to get off, but we did get it off. Um, one thing I want to talk to you about, the other day when I was doing my video on cylinder heads, I was talking about a piston being in the hole, and I gave a quick explanation of that. Basically on a production engine, this piston doesn't come up flush with the deck of the engine when it's at top dead center. They always leave them a little bit lower for um, valve clearance and compression on these later engines like this that were made during the uh, start of the smog era. But when we rebuild an engine, for the maximum performance, you want to have them come up top dead center. So I kind of wanted to know where I was at. I measured um, 
I used a dial indicator to get two top dead center. You can do that if you don't have a top dead center um, indicator, you know, like a dial indicator, you can just eyeball it. Just make sure the piston comes up, stops, and if you start turning when it goes back down into the cylinder, that's top dead center. Now I use a depth micrometer to measure this. It's 20 thousandths in the hole. But not everybody out there has got a depth micrometer. I realize that. I was an industrial mechanic for a long time. And I got a nice set of steric depth mics. Down and dirty way to do this. Take a piece of flat stock. This is key stock. Put it across the cylinder bore, uh, cylinder. Use a good set of uh, feeler gauges. And you can basically use that to get a rough idea of how far the piston is in the hole. Um, that was actually 20, let's see, 20 thousandths. Let's go up to 21. Actually, that's what I did get on my depth micrometer. It's 21. Yep, that's it, 21 thousandths. So my depth micrometer is. <laughs> obviously in calibration but this is a down and dirty way you want to make sure it's a good piece of flat stock um, like I said this is key stock that I had laying in my toolbox and my uh, set of uh, feeler gauges and it works so you don't have to go out and buy a set of uh, depth micrometers or a wide base uh, caliper you can do it this way it gives you a rough idea of where you're at actually I was going to say more than a rough idea, that's pretty accurate because the depth micrometer said 21 thousandths and 21 thousandths in the feeler gauge. So just a quick little hack, um, save you some money when you're doing a rebuild. Okay, we're ready to take the uh, timing gear and uh, cam out. I'm gonna try this new Christmas present out. Let's see, uh, half inch impact I got. It is Harbor Freight, but it's a um, Bauer. I'm not going to get into the debate of how, you know, Harbor Freight versus Snap-on. There's plenty of other people on YouTube doing those videos. I'm just kind of curious how it works. I wanted something electric, so when I bring, like, my um, F-150 or my wife's Accord in here to do a tire rotation, I don't have to fire the compressor and everything up to break loose the uh, lug nuts. Well, it came out pretty good. So one thing on a Pontiac engine and some other engines, you have an eccentric for the fuel pump. Other engines, you have like a push rod that works against the cam. But you want to make sure to keep track of this. There's a good possibility you're going to be reusing it. I am amazed at how good a shape this engine's in. I mean, I don't know if the clarification, of the, I mean, there's enough definition on the video. But that timing chain is in pretty darn good shape. There's not a lot of deflection in it. The teeth are, you know, in good shape. I'm very surprised. I don't think this engine had a lot of mileage on it. I'm going to have to go get a soft knocker. Or in a, probably a pry bar. Pause you for a second. I'll be honest with you. If I wasn't gonna do, I was. I'm gonna probably. I told you earlier, maybe make this into a stroker engine. I'm thinking a 3D3 cubic inch Pontiac. But if you're just gonna put this car back together, take the pistons out, hone it. Um, not a not a dingle ball hone either. Use a real hone. 
Um, even the cam is in good shape. I would replace the cam just because that's the type of guy I am, but that cam doesn't have a lot of run out. New lifters, the cam, uh, rings, bearings, um, gaskets. This, this motor could put me right back into service. I, I'm pretty confident of that. Like I said, it's in good shape. Certainly a lot better than the uh, 307 I rebuilt years ago out of my old Chevy truck. <laughs> That's your thrust plate on a uh, Pontiac engine for your cam, so make sure if you're tearing down a Pontiac V8 to keep track of that. Yeah, we made a little cam tool here. There she goes. It's amazing it's as tight as it is going through those bearings. Like I said before, this motor doesn't have a lot of mileage on it. There. There's the camshaft. Like I said, there's I don't really see a lot of wear on the load. A little wear on them, but not I mean, this shape. is a mild cam, obviously. It's a factory stock cam, but I mean, well, the car probably ran good. I I broke down the numbers. I think it was in an A body. It was probably a Le Mans that it came in. So, not too bad. I'm going to pause again, we'll flip this over and uh, we'll start working on the bottom end. Okay, we got the uh, engine flipped over, that turned to be a chore. Um, I need a better engine stand. I've had this engine stand, I bought it in high school in 1984. And it's served me well over the years, but there's just so much better out there. Um, they've got ones now with gear drives, where you can just crank it, spin the engine over. I had to loosen the bolt up, keep loosening it up with a big pry bar. I finally got it flipped over, but when I was a teenager, I didn't mind doing that, but now, yeah. So let's take the oil pan off and see what we got underneath it. I'm a little nervous how much water came out of that engine when I flipped it over. This is the stuff when you're a mechanic used to really torque you. Every one of these bolts has a 7 16 head. You get back to these last four, they're a half inch. I mean, that's. Ugh. example of how far an engineer will go out of his way to screw over a mechanic. <laughs> and 
we put a 716 to that one. 